I'm so glad you're back. Ordinary Faith Online, YouTube, Facebook, uh, through our internet page, our web page, however you uh, check this out, internet page. My kids probably love that because I love to say interweb to them. They think I'm an old geezer. They might be right, but we're not going to own it right now. We are starting a new series today called Killing It Without Killing Yourself. And we're going to try and look at our normal lives, which aren't that normal at this stage in history, and see how we can live them with greater power, greater joy, and greater satisfaction. I, I pray that God will take this series and help us flip some ideas on its head. And this message is entitled, What If We Didn't Go Back? You see, this, this message is being delivered in April of 2020. And this is the, I'm calling it the, pande- the panic-demic of 2020. <laughs> and times are difficult right now. And um, things are in short supply. We're running out of things. Uh, tempers are flared. People are irritated with each other and their government. Uh, there are signs of government overreach. There are just doubts about the credibility of a whole lot of things. So what I'm suggesting is, is that since God has given us this pause in our history, what if we took this pause as a moment of reflection, and what if we decided not to go back to the way things were? The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, everything is wearisome beyond description. No matter how much we see, we're never satisfied. No matter how much we hear, we are not content. History merely repeats itself. It has all been done before. Nothing under the sun is truly new. You see, uh, America has gone through the 20s before. This is 2020. But the 1920s were an interesting time in America. In the 1920s, America had just come out of World War I and had just wrapped up the Spanish flu epidemic. That launched a 10-year period, or maybe America dove out of that into a 10-year period of excess. In fact, I would suggest, based on minimum wage laws that were launched in the 1910s, that the, the crazy rat race of productivity and more work and, and trying to be the best of the best and all those kind of things in the business world probably began, had its roots in the 1920s. Now, the 1920s didn't end so well. They ended with the, the market collapse in 1929. And so here's my thing. I don't want to do that again. I don't want to go through whatever they went through, the, the 10 years of excess, the 10 years with borrowing from tomorrow just to pay another 10 to 15 years and another war to get out of, I don't want to go down that road. So I don't want to go back. And so I don't know how you feel about things today, but here's my question. What if the next 10 years is going to take a better version of you? What if it's going to take a more spiritual version, a more holy version, a more powerful version of you, a person that you are not yet, that you have not yet grown into? So if it's going to take that, what are we going to do? How are we going to prepare for those kind of things? Now, I am using as a basis for this message the story of Rehoboam. And I'll just tell you the story right quick. You can read about it in Second Chronicles chapter 10. And uh, it ends, his story ends, in, or the story that's relevant to today ends in about verse 4 of chapter 11. In that story, Rehoboam takes the throne after Solomon. Now Solomon took the kingdom of Israel to heights unknown before or since. But he did that on the backs of the people. They, the people worked very hard to achieve the success of Solomon's reign. When Rehoboam took the throne, he wanted to keep that status quo that his father had established. It was a good life. They were wealthy. Everyone was happy. And so he would like to keep that going. But the people came to him and said, hey, we want a break. We want you to make our life easier. The older advisors to Rehoboam said, hey, we should do that. The younger one said no. And Rehoboam, being a young man himself, went with the younger crowd and the kingdom split. It would have been a civil war. Rehoboam was set to do that. He was going to go take the armies out. But when he did take, gather his army to go to war with half the nation of Israel, God sent a prophet and said, No, this is of me. This is the new future. Rehoboam bowed to that, went back to Jerusalem, and he began to put together a new future. One that was unexpected, one that wasn't the status quo, one that he wasn't prepared for, the people weren't prepared for. The sad thing about this story is, is that neither the kingdom of Israel nor the kingdom of Judah fully chose God from that point on. 
And it ended both nations eventually. They were one nation of Israel. After Rehoboam, there were the nation of Israel and the nation of Judah. And then both nations eventually collapsed because they rejected God. Not because of their economic policies, not because of their politics, but because they lost their focus as the people of God. Now, that's what I'd like to avoid. I'd like for Christians, I and myself, to walk out of Panicdemic 2020 with an idea and a heart that says, I am God's man, or she is God's woman, or these are God's kids. And we live for God, and we're focused on God. So I'm posing the question, what if this is our do-over? And I'm going to pose the rest of these questions in, as what-if questions. Everybody loves those, right? Just kidding. First John 2.17. This world's fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. What if we stop believing in the world? What if we realize that this world's just going to fail us again and again and again? How many times is the market going to collapse? How many times are you going to lose your retirement, lose a job, lose the American dream slash nightmare? What if we just stop believing that the world was our answer? And rather than living like this world was going to take care of us, and if we played by some set of rules that no one has actually taught us that we'll be okay, what if we realized that we, we lived in a world that's at war, and that there's an enemy trying to destroy us, and that our only hope is God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit to empower us? What if we started living like we didn't believe in the world anymore? Here's a second question. What if we gave the rest of our lives to God? Jesus said this in Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. I mean, really, what are we waiting on? Are, are we waiting on us to hit the lottery? Waiting on retirement? Waiting on the kids to grow? Waiting on college to be completed? When do we actually start living for God? When do we lay down our own will, our own way, and pursue God as he designed? See, that's what Christians do. They follow Christ, and Christ said, the only way you follow me is you lay down, you give up your own way, and you take up your cross. And he was alluding to exactly what he was doing for the Father. He laid down his own life, took up the cross, and suffered for the glory of God. And that's what he's telling us. What if we stop putting that off? What if we started saying, Michael Maynard died April of 2020, in the great panicdemic of 2020, Michael Maynard was over. From that point on, he was just a son of God. He just lived for God. He he started being a missionary everywhere he was. He didn't need a special reason, didn't need anywhere to go. Where he was, he was bringing Jesus there. Wouldn't that be a great thing to be able to say, a great epitaph to to have shared after you're gone and this life is done what if we just gave the rest of our lives to god realized we were living on borrowed time and just gave it all to him jesus explained my nourishment comes from doing the will of god who sent me and from finishing his work and my third question is what if we discovered real satisfaction? You see, Jesus was satisfied doing the will of God. It was, it was a sweet treat to him. It was the greatest enjoyment to him to just do the will of God. What if, what if we looked at our faith that way? I just love God. I love to think of heaven. I love the scriptures. I love to worship. I love to pray. I love to be with other believers. I love to talk about Jesus. And we, we began to push out of our lives. We had so much Jesus. So much God talk in our life, so much love for God in our life that it began to push out all the the things that weren't God, all the things that that didn't glorify God in our life. It, it's so easy for us to to get these idols and build some kind of altar to them and sacrifice all this time and money to those things. What if we stop doing that and we just realize that what really satisfies is when I obey God, when I enjoy God, when I worship God. Those are the things that truly satisfy. Every one of us could rechart our future today. We could refuse to go back to the calendars, the busy schedules, the craziness of pre pandemic 2020. We could all say, this is my turning point. April 2020, I'm done. From this point on, I, I serve God and I live for God. I died in that pandemic. And from now on, I live for Jesus completely. Everything before me is for Him. Have a great day, and uh, I hope your demise in the panic of 2020 wasn't that bad.